let's see if I can remember how to do this. Hello, my name is Jen, I'm an author and a book reviewer and I have been uploading videos about books to this channel for 10 years now. I have been gone for a little while. It feels like forever because lots has happened, but for me it's been about two months because I pre-recorded some things. For you it's been about, I think about a month or so. Um, but I mentioned in my last video that I was going to be disappearing for a little bit because I was going to have a baby. And I have now had said baby and now I'm here. Hi, um, I'm not back weekly. I used to upload videos every Sunday and I'm assuming that I will get back to that, but I'm not at that point yet as I'm filming this. I am six weeks postpartum and um, I'm gonna try and sound coherent in this video and you're gonna have to forgive me if I don't. I am filming this in a snatched moment that I have and I also know that next door are putting up scaffolding at some point today, which may happen. So I'm just living life on the edge, taking a big risk and shoving this camera in my face and we'll see what happens. It may be that I change uh, clothes. I forgot the word for clothes. It may be that I change clothes halfway through this video. That's a weird sentence. I mean, I may have to film this video over several days. That's what I was trying to say. It's just the words did not come out in the right order. That should tell you where I'm at right now. I am very happy, but discombobulated. That's, that's about it. So I thought for this video, and um, we could just have a chat, a catch up. I asked on Instagram if you had any questions, so I will answer some of those. Um, and I probably won't be editing this too much, so you can join me as I happily fall over my words today. Um, I've got a cup of tea as big as my head. I invite you to go grab one too. Um, anything else I need to say? Um, I don't think so. Oh, you're finding me just as I am today. Um, I kept on thinking I need to get uh, ready to film, as in I normally wear wigs when I film. If you're new, I have alopecia, but I'm not wearing wigs at the moment because I don't have time. But also um, my daughter, I have a daughter, I have a daughter, is so young that I just know that if I put wigs on, she wouldn't know who I was. So I just haven't been wearing them. Obviously that will change as uh, her eyesight gets better. And um, you can make changes like that and it's not so weird to her. So I just, yeah, haven't been wearing wigs at all. But you at least find me dressed and not in my pyjamas. So I think we'll take whatever we can get. So questions. The main question that popped up again and again when I put that question box up over on Instagram because you're all so lovely is how am I? How are we? How am I recovering? How is life? Etc. Etc. Um, I am feeling all of the conflicting yet compatible emotions that I think all new parents or most new parents feel. Uh, I feel overwhelmed and grateful, happy and tired, panicked yet cosy, you know, just bouncing from one extreme to the next. I think that is just, you know, how it goes. Um, I didn't have the best start to parenthood at all. I was very sick at the beginning. I um, mentioned in my last video that I'm not going to be sharing our child online or talking about parenthood in general um, for a variety of reasons, but I'm happy to answer this question because it pertains, or the way I'm going to answer it at least, pertains to me and my experience. Um, but yeah, it was a very rocky time. I went in for a planned C-section, so there were many reasons why I was having a C-section or needed to have a C-section, and I was feeling fine about that. I mean, I've had 30 surgeries in my life. I am very familiar with hospitals and surgery, though I'd never had this kind of surgery before, obviously, um, and everything seemed to go absolutely fine, um, but then I ended up with a CSF leak, which is where an anaesthetist or my anaesthetist um, accidentally punctured the dura, which is the coating of your spinal cord. Um, and that can happen with an epidural because of the size of the needle. But I had a spinal block, which is a smaller needle. It shouldn't have happened. I don't know what went on, but um, I didn't know it had happened at first and neither did they. So for the first few days in the hospital, I was feeling pretty awful. But I thought, well, of course I feel awful. I've just had surgery and I'm trying to recover from it and look after a newborn baby. And um, and I have had no sleep. So of course I feel absolutely <laughs> dreadful. But by the time we got home, I just got worse and worse and worse. Uh, I was hallucinating. I 
um, had the worst migraine I've ever had in my life and then I had this very very strange symptom which is what made me think this is something that's really not okay when I sat up one what well, wasn't even mo one morning it was the middle of the night I had this weight this heaviness that as I sat up crawled all the way up my spine and then smacked me on the back of the head it really felt like someone had got a hammer and smacked me on my head it wasn't like the after feeling of someone doing that I was like I felt someone do it except no one had touched me so I thought well that doesn't feel great so I googled that very specific symptom and Google said you have a brain injury and I thought oh that doesn't sound great. Um, so I called the hospital and um, told them what was happening, what my symptoms were, and they told me to come back in right that second. So yeah, uh, I said to my husband as I was leaving, um, which was very distressing to go back into hospital and to leave my child at home. Obviously she was with, you know, my partner and uh, he could look after her, but it would, you know, I mean, a few days after giving birth, having to say goodbye and go back into hospital was, not what I really wanted or what anybody wanted. Um, yeah, I said to him, why does it feel like my brain is falling out of my skull? And uh, I got into the hospital and they explained, it's because your brain is falling out of your skull. Not not really, but kind of. So a CSF leak is, as I said, when um, you get trauma to the dura, the coating of your spine. So there was a hole from the spinal block from the c-section and csf fluid which is the fluid that coats your spine and your brain was leaking out into my body and causing my brain to sag um so yes that's why i felt absolutely terrible and so for the first 10 days i was extremely ill and couldn't leave bed uh and uh yeah it was really scary it was very very scary would not recommend uh i lost my hearing i oh, i don't where boy there were lots of side effects and it was very distressing and awful <laughs> so that was not a fun time but i am feeling so much better now my hearing hasn't come back properly uh hopefully it will um i have a checkup about that so yes that was not the beginning to everything that I had anticipated. There were many things that I was worried about. That was not one of them. Um, but now I am good and we are all doing great. And um, she is wonderful and we absolutely adore her. And as I said, I'm not sharing her online, but I really wish I could in many ways because I am biased. She is the cutest thing alive. So other questions. Someone said, did you take a book with you to the hospital? You know what? I did take a book with me to the hospital. I had trolled so many what to pack in your hospital bag videos and I was really chuffed with the bag that I ended up packing. I think there were only maybe two things that I didn't end up using, um, but one of those was the book <laughs> that I packed. It was on all of the lists, even the NHS list. It was like, bring a book so you have something to read. I'm not sure who is reading. Uh, to be honest, I did have time to read before going in for the c-section so I could have read then but I was just too tense stressed excited I couldn't imagine reading then but I did take a book with me and the book that I decided to take with me because I ummed and odd about it for ages was um Northern Lights by Philip Pullman so the first book in his Dark Materials trilogy I didn't want to take a new book with me one I hadn't read because I thought I would be too anxious or tired to really take in a new book so I thought taking an old favourite would be comforting and I think there's something cheesy in there about travelling between worlds or, or whatever um, that I thought may be fun mirroring to read about so that was the one that I took with me but it stayed in my suitcase and I did not read. Maybe if I hadn't had the brain injury I would have read something I don't know. Um, I did at one point listened to uh, two podcasts actually while I was there because uh, I got n absolutely no sleep at all for the three days I was in initially um, and I needed some kind of distraction but then I couldn't hear the, it properly. All sounds sounded like they were underwater and muffled yet at the same time really loud. I also thought that I could see the outside when I was inside. Uh, the hallucinations were interesting but yeah I did listen to an episode of Books Unbound which is Erin and Raylene's podcast and I listened to an episode of Sana's new podcast which is the end of the world book club podcast um I love listening to podcasts that my friends make because that just feels super comforting 
but I absolutely don't remember which episodes I listened to when I was in hospital. I did not absorb any of that information, but I thank them for offering some kind of weird underwater comforting vibes at the time that I listened to them, even if I can't remember the information that um, was said to me. So yeah, I have done or did do no reading in the hospital and then someone else or many people actually asked me what have I been reading some people asked if I have more or less time to read now I have less time to read I think that that uh, is what I would have guessed previously anyway so I'm not surprised by that at all I think this period in particular is about uh, forgiveness and grace and going with whatever the day is throwing at you and I have only been reading one book which is fine um, I mean the book is more than fine, I just mean it's fine to have only been reading one book. I had set myself absolutely no expectations at all. And the book that I'm currently reading is The Book of Strange New Things by Michelle Faber. I um, am reading this because it's our Patreon book club book and if you would like to join Patreon I will link it in the description box down below. I'm certainly having a fun time revisiting this book. So this year in 2024 over on Patreon, we are revisiting some of my, what I think are my favourite books ever, and I'm reevaluating, seeing if they are my favourite books ever. And The Book of Strange New Things, I first read in 2014, so it's been 10 years, and um, I'm uploading videos there sporadically, checking in when I've read a few chapters and talking about my thoughts. The book club is open to everybody, so every tier, so you only pay I think one dollar or one pound a month and you unlock that and a few other things as well. But yeah, I'm finding it fascinating to revisit this book. It is such a long book. I started reading it in physical form and now I've switched to the audiobook version of it. It's about a man called Peter who is recruited to um, preach the word of God to this alien life form on a planet on the other side of the universe and I like how timeless it feels and when I say timeless I don't mean it could be set in any period I mean timeless because he feels very lost and like nothing is particularly real and that time is not behaving in a normal fashion because on this new planet that he has been sent to days last three Earth days, so he never really knows where he's at or what's going on. And I feel that in my soul at the moment. So it's fun to read it and see those parallels with my own life right now, especially because I tend to listen to a little bit of it at say three, four in the morning, which also feels like a very timeless time. So that is the one book that I have been reading. Someone else says, what have you been watching recently? Uh, Mr. M and I haven't really been watching much. We tend to have about 20 minutes at the end of the day before we just fall asleep. And to be honest, those 20 minutes, we're watching something, but also watching the monitor on our phones as well. <laughs> um, and I'm not sure which one gets the most attention, but we, before um, I went into hospital, we, watched all of the series of Barry, which is a comedy drama about a hitman. I enjoyed it. I think I enjoyed the first season a lot more than the others, but also I think by the time we got to the final series in that series, I was just so uncomfortable and, and grumpy that maybe nothing would have entertained me, I'm not sure. Uh, but I definitely would recommend at least the first series. Then we watched Physical 100, we watched the first season of that when it came out, the second season just came out, and it's a Korean, is it reality TV? I guess it is, but it's about finding the strongest person, uh, people have to go through all of these challenges, um, Mr M and I kind of have a soft spot for shows like that, like Broken Skull Ranch and Ultimate Beastmaster. I don't know, I don't know if it's one of those things like watching people speed clean, you feel as though, I don't know, you've cleaned yourself. Am I making any sense? You know, if you watch people doing all of these ultimate challenges, it makes you feel like you've done some exercise. Does that make me sound absolutely unhinged? Possibly, um, but that is part of it, I think. But I enjoyed that, it, it, but I wouldn't say it was my favorite thing ever. And then we also started watching Three Body Problem, which is a series that I spoke about in my 
recent books to movies slash TV series video. Was that a sentence? I talked about it because it was a book that was being adapted and I haven't read the book and I didn't really have any urge to read it but I thought I would check out the series because it looked quite interesting. It was the kind of adaptation that I thought I would enjoy more on the screen than on the page. If I had to book maths it, I would say it was kind of like His Dark Materials meets Man in the High Castle meets Cloud Atlas. And again, I enjoyed the beginning of it, but I feel like it tailed off towards the end. And I have heard people say that if you really enjoy the book, the adaptation feels quite lacking and simplified. I think the book is quite scientific. The adaptation is not. So um, it's always a bit frustrating when books that you love are not adapted in the way that you would like, but I don't feel personally, emotionally attached to it. So I did not have that problem. It's about a group of friends who are scientists and weird things are happening in the world and um, I don't know how much to say actually but it is about connecting with an alien life form. So again I guess it parallels with me reading the book of Strange New Things. It does feel like a lot of things have been speaking to each other recently which has felt quite surreal but again not one of my favorite things ever i am excited to watch the new series of race across the world which is one of my favorite tv shows where pairs of people um sometimes say a parent and a son sometimes couples go on an adventure where they are given the price of a plane ticket from one place to another and they have to get to that other place without using a plane so the first season was to get from london to singapore via land and sea. I don't know where they're going to this series but I know that they're starting in Japan and that really really excites me so whenever we are awake enough to, to watch that we will. I think maybe only the first episode is up as I'm filming this. Um, someone asked have you gone down any YouTube rabbit holes recently? Um, I haven't been watching much YouTube but since I last talked about YouTube recommendations, I think there are a few people, channels, things that I would recommend. I did fa fall down a, a weird rabbit hole at one point, which led me to Hannah Ricketts' channel, who makes videos about London and taking you to various different places around London. But she has this series where she'll go and show you the food in certain food halls. And I remember one evening, watching videos where she was showing you all the things that you get in Harrods food hall and I don't know what it was about that that I found so satisfying but maybe I was just really hungry that evening that's quite possible um but I just really enjoyed that uh booktube wise Ben Reed's good if you're not subscribed to him you should be he's great Hannah is it Hannah's lost the plot is that the name of your channel Hannah I have lost the plot I can't remember. I think that's the name of her channel. I will link a video down below where she did a vlog where she went to Paris um, for work but was talking about books and I just found that video so lovely in particular. In fact lots of you asked me what I think of the Poor Things adaptation. Poor Things is a book by Alistair Gray, it's one of my favourites and I've been highly anticipating the film version which is done by uh, Yorgos Lanthimos and I haven't been able to see it because um, I hadn't been going places when it was at the cinema and now I think you can rent it on YouTube but Mr M and I looked and I think it's over two hours long and we just thought oh, I don't know when we're gonna watch that. At some point I will but to be honest I have been talking with people who have seen it. I had a long chat with Mercedes about it. Um, Hannah over at Hannah's Lost the Plot did a video about the book and the film and just the way people have been talking about it makes me think I probably am not going to love the film too much. At least I think maybe I will enjoy it but I won't love it as much as the book because of certain changes they have made regarding the narrative structure of the book which is one of the things that I love the most about it. So I don't have anything to report yet because I haven't seen it but I don't think I'm going to be rushing to see it. At some point I will watch it and I will let you know what I think when I do. But yes I would recommend Hannah's channel. Um, Elise Myers I had followed her over on Instagram but didn't realise that she had a YouTube channel and I have really been enjoying her videos. She is very funny and just very, I don't know, personable I think. I, I like the way that she talks about life and situations and 
Also, I think there's something about her that reminds me of Jenna Marbles. So if you have a Jenna Marbles shaped hole in your life that you would like to fill, I would recommend her channel if you're not following her already. Oh, and also Ali over at this Little Wonderful Life, I think that's her channel. Very cozy, talks about crocheting, walks, food. If you uh, like those things, which I imagine you do because you're here, then I would recommend her channel as well. Oh, someone asked if I had had any book mail. I have had book mail. Let me grab it because it's in a pile behind you, two seconds. Okay, I have not looked at these books yet, so we can look at them together. I have been sent, this is a finished copy, so I do know what this book is because I was sent a proof. Uh, this is Monstrum by Lottie Mills. This is a short story collection, own voices, disability rep, and sounds right up my street. So I'm excited about that one. Then I was sent a few unsolicited books. I don't accept unsolicited books, but if we're talking about book mail, this is what has landed on my uh, doorstep. And if these are not up my street, I will make sure they go to a good home. But this is The Horse by Willie Vlauten. And this is about Al Ward, who is 65. He lives in Nevada. And one morning, a horse arrives outside his home for no reason, and I think stays. And he has to decide what to do, whether he's going to look after it. And um, it says that he is broken by alcohol alcoholism and anxiety. That's Al, not the horse. Um, and then I think we get... A look back at his life as a musician. I don't know if he's telling the horse about that. Maybe he is. I don't know. Then we have Lucy Caldwell's Openings. This is a short story collection. I have read one of her collections previously and then I was also sent this which is Dead Animals by Phoebe Stucks. This is about a woman who is assaulted at a party and then she wakes up the next day and has to figure out what she's going to do about that and I think she connects with another woman who was also assaulted by the same man and they discuss what they are going to do together and then I was also sent a new collection by Anthony Varney Capaldeo who is one of my favourite poets and this is published by Castnet it's called Polka Dot Wounds I particularly enjoyed their collection Oh my goodness, what is it called? Measures of Expatriation. I read that back in 2016. I think it was one of my favourite books that year. I think that their poetry is just so inventive and playful when it comes to language and discussions around language and the poems really beg to be read out loud. And then finally, um, this, which I haven't opened yet, I think is Julia Armfield's new book, which is coming out this summer. She is the author of Our Wives Under the Sea and also the short story collection. I can see it in my head, but I can't remember the name of it. Maybe it will say on this book, Salt Sloan. That is what it is called, but this is her new novel. It's called Private Rights. Let us look at the blurb together. It's been raining for a long time now, for so long that the lands have reshaped themselves. Oh yes, I remember, because this is one of my anticipated releases. I think this is about a group of siblings who come back together in a flooded world after their father has died? Yes, as the sisters come together to clear the grand glass house that is the pinnacle of his legacy, they begin to sense that the magnetic influence of their father lives on through it. Someone asked, what are your thoughts on the Jacqueline Wilson news? So Jacqueline Wilson recently announced that she is writing her first adult novel, and it's going to be a sequel to the Girls series, which I read when I was I think pre-teen. I think I was probably 11 or so. The first one is called Girls in Love, then there was Girls Under Pressure, Girls Out Late, then there was Girls in Tears, so it was a quartet. That one came out much later and I didn't really like that one very much, but I was obsessed with those first three books, especially Girls Under Pressure. It's the kind of book that I don't know how I would feel about now if I reread it, because it was dealing with eating disorders and stuff like that. Um, I used to re-listen to those books over and over and over again and yeah just love the characters so much so she is revisiting those characters and writing about them in their 40s did you read those books when you were young i don't know what it was about them but yeah they feel very special to me so i am excited that she is writing this new book but also rather apprehensive at the same time because i kind of want to keep that i don't know what this is I think I'm saying I want to keep that memory in a bubble and um, I don't want to be, you know, disappointed. I don't want that bubble to get popped. 
but I will definitely be reading the book and um, we'll see what we make of it, won't we? I think it's out later this year. What are your future, oh sorry, I missed the question. What are your thoughts on the Women's Prize long list, the International Booker, etc.? I'm afraid I don't have any thoughts, I am sorry. I had planned or hoped to have filmed a Women's Prize long list reading vlog prior to going on um, this uh, mini maternity leave, but that didn't end up happening. There was some miscommunication and the books were not sent to me, the list wasn't sent to me, so I didn't get around to reading any of them or to uh, do any work on them at all. I may be reading the shortlist for work, in which case I will talk about them in a video as well, um, but I don't have any thoughts on the long list right now. Same with the International Booker. Maybe I'll just come back to it next year and we can dive into it properly then. I feel like if I try and do it this year, I am gonna be frustrated with the amount I am able to do and it probably won't be the most enjoyable thing to watch. So you're gonna have to forgive me. This year I am stepping aside. There are lots of other booktubers who are talking about these prizes though, so please go and enjoy their content. Um, any tips for a reading slump? I made a video about this a while ago. I will link that in the description box down below. And then final question, is this the final question? Oh, someone asked, what are your video plans? Sorry. Um, so I don't have a strict plan, which I think I kind of covered a bit in the last answer. I will report back, I think is what I'm saying. Um, you will probably see a video from me every couple of weeks. I will try and do some reading vlogs. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to work right now, but I'll figure it out and we will get there. And then I will do some sit down um, videos as well going forward too. And I thank you for your patience as I work out what the heck is going on and feel my way through. The final question was, what books are you, Sash? Will you be reading to your little one? There were so many questions on this. Uh, my children love Franklin so much. It must be a lovely thought that you'll be able to read your own books to your baby. That is a weird thought. Um, I have not read her Franklin yet. Um, if you're new, I write for adults and children and I have a series of picture books called the Franklin and Luna series. The first one is called Franklin's Flying Bookshop. But yes, I have not read that one to her yet. I have so many um, children's picture books. I don't even see them here. You can see some of them. They are there. There are, I'm not doing a very good job of pointing. They are there. There are so many um, that I have that are um, mine, which obviously she can uh, have too. Um, but I have, of course, been purchasing books for her. And we, of course, started reading books to her as soon as we got home, or at least as soon as I um, got better. We have read some of our old childhood favourites to her. You know, we're going on a bear hunt, some Jill Murphy, whatever next. We also have some of the Campbell board books. I have a soft spot for those because they're called Campbell board books and it makes me feel like they are something to do with me, they're nothing to do with me. Though having said that, I have done work with Pam McMillan on them, but not these specific ones, but they remind me of Topsy and Tim books that I used to have when I was a kid. You know, Topsy and Tim go to the doctor or to the dentist or to the shops. Um, and they're just really nice books with fun things to turn in them. Not that she can do that yet. Her favourite though is this one which is Little Days Out of the Park by Sally Garland in which a grandmother takes her grandchildren to the park with a picnic. I'm not sure if I'm showing you this very well but it has flaps on each double page spread and it's set in the autumn and why not instill a love of autumn as early as possible. But our favourite book to read is this one here which is Dim Sum Palace by X Fang, which is inspired by Morris Sendak's, I didn't say that correctly, um, Morris Sendak's book, The Night Kitchen, about a girl called Liddy who is going to Dim Sum Palace with her family and she dreams about it the night before and in that dream she gets turned into a dumpling. Beautiful mixture of slightly scary but also cosy and will make you very hungry. Okay, I feel like my time is up. My time is up, so I'm gonna wrap this up and thank you for um, being here and for waiting for me to come back, which I'm assuming you did do if you are watching this video right now. I will be back with another video when I can. In the meantime, if you do enjoy my channel and you would like to support me over on Patreon, I would be very, very grateful and there's extra content over on there too. Link is in the description box down below, always appreciated, especially appreciated 
at this current time. Um, if you're not subscribed, please do. I will be back when I am back and I am sending lots of love to you all. I'll see you later.